You may remember back in the January 27th edition of Under the Radar, I talked about the decision at Oxford University to extend exam times by 15 minutes for all students in maths and computer science with the aim of improving the scores of women because the percentage of men receiving top honours in those subjects was double that of women. Because, of course, in the world of blank slateism, we must override achievement based on merit to achieve the faux equality of outcome desired by the ideologues. But only, of course, where women are the ones underachieving. So a few days ago in Australia, the University of Melbourne announced that they will be offering female-only classes in a bid to improve retention rates of women in STEM subjects. Now, unfortunately, this story raises more questions than it answers. A top Melbourne university is offering female-only classes in a bid to improve retention rates of women in STEM subjects. The University of Melbourne confirmed it was trialling the experimental workshop in computer science this semester based on advice from previous female student groups. Department of Computing and Information Systems Professor Tim Baldwin said it was about encouraging female students to stick around by building a support network among students. So it's not clear, but it doesn't sound like they're running separate lectures for women in IT. It sounds like an additional class or workshop in this case. We start with about one third of the cohort female in first year. By third year, we've dropped to about 120th, Professor Baldwin said. Now that's a very significant dropout rate, just to put that in raw numbers. Let's say your first year cohort of IT students is 100. At Melbourne University, that would mean 33 or one third of female. But by the third year, they are 120th of the cohort. That means in two years, they've gone from 33 to five female students out of the initial cohort. Or put another way, 85% of women are dropping out by the third year. It would also be interesting to know what the male dropout rate is, but we aren't told that information. Female students tend to value their connection with the teaching staff more so than male students. If they can form those bonds among themselves, maybe that'll make a difference, he said. Professor Baldwin said the faculty would definitely consider extending the trial to other subjects if it proved successful. So it appears that female students are less autonomous than male students. They need more support. But don't worry, it's not because we think females are any less adept at computing. It's absolutely not the case. Well, if they're not any less adept, then why the need for special classes? The message the university seems to be pushing is that women are not less adept than men. It's just that men and women have different learning styles. Women need more support. But that would then appear to be an admission that men and women are different. However, we also learn from the Dean of the School of Engineering, Graham Schaefer, that IT was a male-dominated field and needed to be more balanced to reflect modern society. Now, bear in mind, this is the Dean of the School of Engineering regurgitating social justice talking points, not some gender studies professor. Whenever you hear this assertion, and that's all it is, an assertion without foundation, your first question should be, why? Why should males and females be represented across occupational categories with respect to their proportions in the population? And then you should ask, do you think it's a problem that women are underrepresented in bricklaying or as sewage treatment workers? And if you take this to its logical conclusion, is it a problem that Indigenous males are not represented in proportion to their percentage of the population in massage therapy? But of course, you never hear those arguments. It's only ever made with respect to women. And so we have to spend millions of dollars trying to get more women into fields they don't want to be in because we start out with a false assumption of blank slatism. As I said, this story raises more questions than it answers. What proportion of women are dropping out of IT, are dropping out of university altogether, or transferring to other departments? If women are dropping out of IT and going into, say, psychology or life sciences, that might tell you something. Perhaps it's more about preference. They start doing IT and realise they don't like it. Could it be that the constant push to get more women in STEM is backfiring? We don't find any of that out from this article, but we are supplied with some more context-free information about Melbourne University's overtly sexist hiring policies. The university yesterday advertised for five female lecturers to join the engineering and computer science disciplines. At present, women only represent 22% of engineering academic staff at the university. So this is not the first time Melbourne University has done this. I've reported before that they advertise for female-only mathematics faculty. 
So if you're not Australian, yes, it is perfectly acceptable to advertise jobs just to women. In Australian law, it is ironically called positive discrimination. So women are only 22% of engineering academic staff at Melbourne University. Well, that's obviously a travesty, isn't it? Until, of course, you do some basic fact-checking, which journalists don't seem to like doing, and find out that between 2000 and 2015, women comprised 15.5% of all domestic graduates in engineering and 19.7% of international graduates. And given that there are more domestic graduates than international, that would mean women comprise something on the order of 17% of all graduates in engineering. So yeah, only 22% of engineering academic staff is a real problem. I wonder if Melbourne University is trying to boost the number of male gender studies professors. Now, it was difficult to find any other reporting on this story, but I did find it discussed on The Morning Show. Now, you shouldn't expect to find too much in the way of intelligent, nuanced conversation on The Morning Show, but I think it's worth a watch anyway. Well, a top Melbourne university is offering female-only classes in an attempt to improve retention rates of women in science and computing subjects. The university said that by the third year, the female students in those subjects dropped to about one twentieth of the original enrolment numbers. Yeah, for more, we're joined by media man Matt DeGroote and journalist Angela Mollard. Hi, team. Uh, uh, we have single-sex schools, like obviously high schools. Are single-sex universities a good idea, Ange? We have to grow up sometime and actually be in a mixed world, don't you? I think that's a stupid idea. It's incumbent on the teachers and lecturers at that university to to make those courses interesting, to speak to those female students about why they've got such a low retention rate. Perhaps it's the way they're teaching it. Perhaps they're not collegial enough. Perhaps they don't communicate enough. But then, you know, once you come out of your degree, you can't go into a science lab and just ask for it to be female only and that you're the only one allowed to look through the microscope and all the men have to go over there. it's not going to work. It's a, it's a ridiculous notion. I, 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 oh, I, I was certain that we were going to come at this from the other way. I was, <laughs> I was certain that you were going to come and say this is a wonderful idea if it's going to allow more women to be educated in the field. And it's great. But you're, you're off it. You think it's a terrible idea. Well, I do, yeah. Obviously, the university has deemed that one of the reasons that so many people drop out is because there is a lack of camaraderie amongst women. There's a lack of support. And they think that if they do this, then they'll be able to pu- uh, push through to the end and then go for those jobs. Isn't that a better idea if more people are getting educated, isn't that the win? Actually, no. The Productivity Commission in Australia has consistently warned that pushing more people into STEM fields is not a good idea because there aren't enough jobs for them. 20% of people with bachelor's degrees in natural and physical science still haven't got a job after three years. And of those that do work, many are in unrelated fields. About a quarter of people with science degrees say their qualifications are not relevant to their employment. The same is true for 30% of people with information technology degrees. But do go on, Mr. White Knight. Look, are you, can, so, are you just disagreeing for the sake of disagreeing? Uh, no, my, my, oh. honest, my, honest, my yeah. honest belief is that if you get more people who are educated, then mm. more people will go for the jobs and the best person will get the okay. job. Okay, so they've been in a science laboratory with just women around them doing talky feeling. Then they have to get into the workplace and suddenly it's a bit harder and the conversation's different and they can't handle it. And they drop out then when we've invested in them. Get there early. Work it out. Look, do tutorials that it may be a female only, but not a whole course, not a whole lectures. But it's, obviously it's what discrimination. is happening... It's discrimination. It's a discrimination against I'm men. <laughs> Talky feely, well, that's obviously a sign of internalised misogyny. But of course, she's right. If you continue to coddle women, then they will be expected to be coddled for their whole life. In 10 years' time, men will have to walk around the workplace in burkas with their mouths taped shut in order not to oppress women. Anyway, if you're an IT student at Melbourne University and can shed some light on this situation, please share your thoughts in the comments below. I'll see you next time.